Network Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. and I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. Coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, home of the world champions, Atlanta Braves. Unbelievable. They got it done, okay? Last year, up 3-1, they lose to the Dodgers. Don't make it into the big dance. Up 3-1, could have closed it out on um, Monday night. Uh-oh. Or Sunday night, Halloween, lose it. Have to go back to Astro. Everybody's doubting Thomas is down here in Atlanta. Oh, they're going to lose both games. Last night, 7-zip. Boom. Guess what? The parade on Friday, 2 million people downtown in the ATL. I don't know where they're all going to park, but <laughs> it's going to be uh, quite the celebration because – Listen, they haven't been in the playoffs, uh, I think, on my last podcast, the one before, since 1999. I mean, they had the big run in the 90s, had one championship, should one more. But, uh, you know, we'll take that one. And the ATL, let's face it, we don't have many uh, champions here. Uh, <laughs> the Falcons choked against the Patriots when they could have run three plays, kicked the field goal, game over, of course. We all know what happened then in overtime. And uh, oh, if you're a lacrosse guy out there, our Georgia Swarm won the national champion, the indoor league, uh, about two years ago. That was awesome, but no one, you know, no one even knows who they are. But we actually, that was our our first world championship since the Braves won it, in, you know, in the '90s. But they hadn't won it in so long. So, us getting a championship, and I'm a Yankee living in the South. I'm a transplant. You know, I like Okra, I like Waffle House, I like Ritz, but it's really good for the city because you know. Uh, you know, championships and our runs, they, they only go so far. And uh, there's a lot of transplants out there. And half the games you go to, half the stadiums filled up with other people's jerseys. And uh, wow. so it's, uh, it's crazy. So it's a, you know, it's a pretty good day. It's a pretty good gig. You know, the next big thing coming up is the SEC championship, Georgia against Alabama. We got to beat the tie, you know? So, you know, that's the big thing coming up here. Um, but congrats to the Braves. Way to go, gents. Way to go, boys. You know, enjoy it. And uh, I'll be watching it on the TV, on the parade on uh, Friday. Sorry, I'm not going down there. So uh, with that said, we're going to uh, get a nice guest up in the great state of Wisconsin, John Domacy. He's the uh, vice president of marketing for Bradley Corp. And uh, they do uh, fixtures uh for restrooms etc we'll let john talk about that more john say hello from uh wisconsin good morning from wisconsin and congratulations yeah you know we'll take it uh you know like i said it's uh it's been a uh you know a long time coming and uh we were talking before we got on you know they used to be from milwaukee so you know that tie was there we had to beat milwaukee to get into the in, into the uh in the first round and uh, that was a good series you know i always like you know, look as long as the games are close and they're and you know that's what i want to see you know good sportsmanship every you know like you know it, that's what it's all about so all yeah, these, we, we, that feeling. we we just uh celebrated with the milwaukee bucks as you know and that was a long time coming too. So know exactly how you feel. Hey, listen, listen, like I said, they beat the ATL to get in there and I was pulling for the box. You know, I, you know, I didn't want to see those other guys win and uh, you know, and uh, who knows, maybe there'll be uh, you know, the repeat this year, you know, That's listen, right. getting back to the championship game, the, the announcers were right last night. You don't know if it's going to ever happen again. You know, it's very tough to repeat. It's very tough to get back in the championship game. It doesn't matter how good of a team that you had during the season. It's all about momentum. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a high school coach, so I, I, I understand all this. Thing. You got to stay healthy. You got to have momentum. All these different things have to fall right in place for you to win a championship. And, um, you know, hats off to Tom Brady, you know, all those rings and stuff. I mean, that guy know, knows how to win. Even though we just lost this weekend, it's okay. You know, losing, you learn from it. And, and you know, I always put sports with business. I always think it's competition. It's the same kind of game. You're not going to make every sale. You're not going to, every project's not going to go uh, smoothly, but you have to learn from it. So when you run into that hindrance again, you know, you, you'll know how to deal with it. So, John, this is actually how we, you know, operate commercial construction coffee talk. You have to tell us your saga. You can't leave any skeletons because we can find everything out on the internet. Um, but you got to tell us where you, you know, you know, brothers, sisters, where you grew up, where you went to school, uh, you know, how you ended up at Bradley, and, uh, and then we'll continue on. Uh, so the floor is yours, John. Tell us your saga. 
Well, I was uh, born and bred in the Milwaukee area and uh, I've been here most of my life, tra uh, lived in different areas of Wisconsin, uh, started at a, uh, at a retail chain many, many millennia ago called the Music Land Group. So I was a, a promotions manager for the Music Land Group and got all the, the tickets and the passes and giving away the records and CDs and everything. If you anyone out there remembers those things anymore. And uh, uh, then I worked at a, a product design firm called uh, Design North and uh, had consumer products. Uh, as well as B2B clients. So we were doing things for Johnsonville and Miller Beer and Quaker Oats. And uh, those photo shoots were a lot of fun uh, all those years uh, that I was there. But uh, came to Bradley uh, 25 years ago. Oh, wow. And was hired at Bradley uh, because I didn't come from the industry. I came with different types of experiences. I uh, came from a, a more of a research standpoint and things like that uh, uh, for product launches and things. So uh, they were looking for, you know, out of industry uh, talent to come in uh, to, you know, cross pollinate with the long time industry people that were here at the time. So uh, that uh, worked out well. I thought I'd be around for a year or two. And uh, uh, over, over that span, I've uh, been... Uh, uh, lucky enough to be uh, leading the uh, marketing, public relations, uh, market research uh, here, also uh, product development, international business, and uh, M&A type and strategy activities here. So I get my uh, uh, fingers into a lot of things, and that's the way I like it. It's a great a uh, hundred year company. Uh, we're just celebrating a hundred years, uh, fifth generation family owned. And we take a lot of pride in that. The uh, Bradley is Milwaukee in the Milwaukee area or is it? Uh, yeah, it's Bradley? always been in the Milwaukee area. Uh, uh, the, it was founded uh, in downtown Milwaukee actually. Uh, we're in a suburb called Menominee Falls and have been here uh, since the 60s. And uh, yeah, we have a great story to tell, a lot of energy and excitement. And uh, uh, when you talk uh, commercial hand washing and uh, emergency safety eye wash fixtures, that's, that's when you talk Bradley. You know, uh, when COVID hit last March, I was in Milwaukee. I was gonna do my uh, men's retreat in uh, Milwaukee because they had the Harley Davidson Museum there oh. and uh, the St. Kate's uh, was just renovated uh, that was right down the street from uh, the um, uh, uh, sports coliseum there downtown oh. and uh, you know it's a really cool little town because the airport's close to downtown hop skip and a jump you're there the lake it was going to be fall and um, we were looking to do it at uh, the beginning of October <laughs> and my women's retreat was going to be in Austin so I thought okay uh, and then COVID was only supposed to last a month, you know, right. so, That's right. so then he started getting in the summer. I'm like, okay, I don't think Austin's going to happen. So I'm going to, I was going to push both events and I was going to do them with the St. Kate's and, uh, and then you had the PGA the weekend before, which got canceled too. So it got rescheduled and, you know, anyway, but it was a beautiful property and uh, I just love downtown Milwaukee. What a really cool town. People are super nice. And uh, actually the weekend I was there, they had, uh, I think they had the marathon going on or something was going on there. And anyway, it was, it was really cool. Um, and uh, when thing gets back to normal and if I ever bring that back to face face, I'm coming back to Milwaukee. So uh, yeah, come up, we'll have a beer. That sounds good. Yeah. You know, I'm a Harley guy. So I had already taken the tour. So I know the whole gig, but uh uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those things, you know, from a, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, it was, it, it was, we wanted to go there, but I was in the airport and someone called me and they said, Hey, the March man just got canceled and Tom Hanks got the bug and everything just got shut yeah. down, you know? So, uh, that's my, my, that's my famous, that was my last trip that I did last March was the last time I was on a plane. You know, and I'm a million miler on Delta. I was on the road every week, you know. Here we are on, on Zoom doing it, you know. Um, all, all those frequent flyers are gone. I, I'm a pretty heavy domestic and international traveler 
as well too. And it's, uh, uh, it's pretty hard when all those have been zeroed out and you're starting from scratch now. So, well, you know, uh, what was funny is uh, I'm doing, a, I'm doing a, uh, I used to do a monthly cocktail party, a reception once a month around the country. So I have one coming up in Phoenix and I went on Delta last yesterday. I hadn't been on the Delta website for God knows how long. And I went on to see if I had any miles in there because I haven't opened the account. And, uh, you know, I went on there. And uh, so I'm getting on my plane on December 2nd to fly out to Phoenix to do my first face-to-face -face event. And uh, I'm looking forward to it to see some of my buds that I haven't seen for a while. And uh, uh, it's, it'll just be good to see some people in uh, uh, and, and, and the conference out there. It has a pretty decent registration. So it should be interesting to see how it all goes. But, uh, you know, from, you know, my wife, She's like, can't you go on the road? Can't you go, you know, used to, you know, used to go on the road every week. It was great, you know, but now I've been here and now, and I told her, I was like, Hey, I think I'm going to go out, you know, for, you know, you know, I'm going to go out and do my thing. And she's like, all right, we're getting back to normal, you know? So yeah, that, that's the same thing when, when a spouse is used to you being gone, uh, you know, 25 to 40% of the time and you're here 24 uh, seven, that's a, that's a different, uh, oh, different yeah. environment in the household. Uh, right. And I did have a couple points. I, I'm a Delta guy too. I had a couple points left, but uh, as I said, my uh, daughter was living down in Atlanta, going to Emory. So the uh, handful of points that I had left were all just to get her back home safely uh, oh, during sure. during the COVID. So uh, so I'm starting that from scratch, as it sounds like you are too. Yeah, you know what? When I was looking at my ticket, I was like, "Okay, should I buy my ticket or show you the miles?" Because at the end of the year, it's not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get back to where I was. Because I was, I was going between gold and platinum every year, and uh, I think I was diamond once, you know, over all my years. But uh, it, it was funny because I, I was like, "Oh my God, what's my password?" I had to look it up on my phone because I hadn't, I hadn't put it in there. And I used to know it by heart. I'd never have to look that up, you know. And it has nothing to do with age. I just, I was like, I haven't used it in 18 months, you know. So I always felt like an important Delta guy when I'm leaving Milwaukee, but when I'd go international and I'd always go to Atlanta to go internationally, then you see all the, all the bag tags and you realize that uh, there's, there's many, many ahead of you. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You and know, they, they wear those bag tags proudly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, let's talk about, uh, uh, you know, you talked about your history let's talk about the pandemic and maybe, you know, obviously you've been at Bradley for 25 years. So you've seen all sorts of things go on. Uh, you know, you've gone through the, the internet.com crash, 9-11, the, uh, you know, the mortgage crash in 08, you know, the comeback, you know, now we, you know, so you've seen a lot of things, the roller coaster per se. What lessons do you think that you know, you at Bradley or just Bradley in general has learned, you know, as the pandemic hit, you know, trying to maneuver and what lessons did you learn through this whole gig? Well, uh, you know, I think you described it perfectly there. It was, you know, supposed to be something that was on the periphery in different countries and we we're just watching it. Then when it came here, it was only supposed to be here a month or two and, you know, it's for sure going to be gone and all that. I, I truly believe you know, kind of like what um, iPods did to the music industry and 9-11 did to air travel. I really think COVID is going to, has uh, forever changed commercial building construction and design. I, I really believe it's, it's had that type of power, that type of impact on what we do because every single part of the of the business, whether I'm talking to architects, interior designers, contractors, mechanical engineers, uh, everyone is looking at things differently. They're, they're all engaging with each other differently to make it happen. Uh, they're getting so many different types of feedback from the facility managers and building owners. So uh, this isn't something that, you know, uh, and of course now we're saying, well, for sure by the end of the year, early next year, you know, it'll officially be gone, uh, that type of thing. I think that those changes are going to be permanent and we'll never go back to the way that we had. That, that's probably the biggest lesson. Uh, uh, also, uh, it's been interesting, uh, not just at Bradley, but 
of course, from the manufacturing, you know, we've been a manufacturer for a hundred years. And I know it's very difficult on the, uh, on our uh, accountants and everything here, our bean counters, uh, because every single thing that we sold normally has spun on its ear. Our touch-free products obviously have gone through the roof far, far higher demand than ever before. And, uh, you know, so you can barely keep up. It really doesn't matter what we did with those. Historically, touch-free products are never going to go down again. Nope. And we just can't even keep up with the orders. On the other side, our, uh, our commercial uh, group showers that you'd see in old uh, uh, school locker rooms is a little difficult selling a, a group column shower. Yeah. Uh, in COVID, when uh, nobody was taking showers in locker rooms, and that was only if the school was even open at all. So, uh, you know, so, you know, five or 10 times the sales for touch free uh, sinks and faucets, probably 90% decline in uh, commercial group, you know, locker room showers. So that, that's pretty tough when you're trying to plan. Uh, you know, manufacturing and capacity loads and raw material buys. So, you know, that's our reality. And I think that uh, Bradley and a lot of companies in our industry have really navigated effectively to make that happen. Did you uh, do a hybrid where you had your employees stay at home or did they come into the office and do the mask? How did you guys figure that out? Uh, we, we were, uh, every state was different, but we were uh, labeled a, a critical essential business uh, because of you know our hand washing products and things like that and our uh, uh, safety products, our emergency uh, eye washes, drench showers, products like that. Uh, so we never uh, shut down. We were always we were always on. Our manufacturing crew did a stellar job of making sure that product kept going out the door. Uh, the departments that support manufacturing many of those employees were here then the office employees we have three different plants uh, we had a hybrid model which we're still using today uh, so that a portion of the employees are working from home and about 50 percent or so are always uh, here so that we can address both sides uh, of everything happening and i, I think the uh, office and shop have just done a, a monumental job of, you know, making all those dramatic changes. And we've come out the other end, uh, very good, positive, and we found it to be very productive. The, um, as far as market development, obviously, like you said, you know, the showers are down, touchless is up. Uh, do you have any new, uh, new and exciting products that you're coming out with, you know, coming up in 2022 as we close 2021? Yes, we, uh, uh, when I brought up touch-free products, uh, that isn't something new for Bradley. We, we were in touch-free products in the 70s and the 80s. And we've, uh, we're, we don't have any levered faucets or anything like that. Most of our products were touch-free you know, long before COVID. So we have just really put uh, a much greater emphasis on our uh, hands-free uh, sink products. And one of the uh, biggest products that we have had coming out just before COVID, and obviously it's uh, catapulted much stronger and faster than anticipated, is our wash bar product that has, in a single fixture, has a uh, soap, water, and dryer all in one fixture on the top of the sink. And that's something that, uh, especially in today's uh, COVID or post-COVID environment, uh, again, we can barely keep those in stock because it, it keeps water off the floor. It keeps splashing away. Uh, there's not uh, extra paper towels. Uh, there's no paper towels that you know, are required to be cleaned up and things like that. So it's a, it's a phenomenal product. We're going to continue to come out with a lot of uh, matching faucet and soap, all touch-free products, uh, because I, I think we've probably seen uh, we're, we're close to the end of just manual type faucets being put into the commercial environment. Mm -hmm. Do you see uh, P 
people that had the manual faucets, you know, whether they were, you know, uh, you know, your product or, you know, any of the major, you know, leaders in that sector, have you seen people do that renovation gig, you know, through COVID as they were shut down and say, hey, you know, maybe we need to put the touchless in there. Maybe we need to, you know, revamp this thing. So when we reopen, we're ready to, you know, bring the public in and know that, hey, you know, we did our due diligence versus just sitting, you know, on our tails and not doing anything and just leaving, you know, because I like, you know, a lot of hotels that were closed, they put new carpet in, they painted. They, they, they got their, their properties in order behind the scenes that you didn't see. So when they did open, you know, it could have been a restaurant, could have been a hotel, could have been a school, exactly. I can go down the list, hospital, whatever it might have been that, uh, because a lot of the, you know, a lot of the retailers, you know, they put the screens up, the plastic things at the cashiers, and they did all the, the, the general stuff that, you know, everybody did uh, in the beginning. But a lot of the other things that are a little more man hour intrusive per se, uh, you know, you got to rip stuff out, you got to put stuff back in, you got to have a power source if it was manual. And are, do you see a lot of that going on too? Yes. Uh, wh whether I'm talking to uh, architects, interior designers, uh, engineering specifiers, uh, all the input that they're getting, uh, because most aren't all fully back in exactly what you said. Uh, many companies are using hybrid type um, office strategies right now. So they are taking advantage of that. Uh, the, the renovation on bathrooms is at an all time high. Uh, it, companies that weren't thinking of doing anything like that, there was nothing in the, you know, in the renovation funnel for them to do that. Uh, uh, schools that are getting a lot of those stimulus funds right now, some of the government stimulus funds that are going through uh, changing, upgrading, uh, their their bathrooms is a key priority, uh, not only just from the cleanliness standpoint, uh, which obviously plays into sinks, but the safety standpoint. Um, uh, they're considering should uh, should they incorporate more of like the corridor concept that you see in airports that uh, when there aren't doors, you know, when there's just uh, more serpentine type areas to get in. Uh, there's a lot of those discussions that are going on right now. Again, because people don't feel comfortable touching things. And uh, again, because of so much attention that has been put on this, uh, once COVID officially goes away, there is not that I haven't talked to anybody in the in the business uh, that, you know, in specification, uh, general contracting, anything that thinks it's just gonna, you know, go back to the norm and those things aren't going to be important. Accessibility, safety, uh, cleanliness, uh, ease, ease of cleaning, uh, those are all going to be of paramount importance going forward. They all should have been there before anyway, you know? Exactly, exactly. You know? It's just, you know, this was a catalyst to, you know, to push things, to, to push people to do different stuff. And, uh, you know, just like the one product line you said, you know, that took the hit and the other one went up there. You know, it was bound to probably happen eventually. This kind of just, you know, you know, pushed it in there. I'll tell you, when I go when I go down to the airport, I haven't in the airport down in Atlanta, you know, Hartsfield in 18 months. So when I go in there, I'm gonna like to see, you know, what they've done, you know, as far as you know, inside there. It should be really interesting, you know. And when I remember when COVID first hit, I told my wife, I'm like, oh my God, by the time I get out of my car, I get on the shuttle, I get off the shuttle. I go through, you know, TSA pre-check. I put my bag in there. I've done. You know, how how are you supposed to keep your hands clean? You know, or right. how, I, so many people have touched so much stuff. By the time I get to my seat, you know, you 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 you're, you're it's just you know impossible. You know, not well, impossible, the, but the CDC down by you still recommends that you know uh, soap and water hand washing is still the very best way to you know, stop the transmission of any type of disease uh, and illness. But when that isn't possible, uh, here's a shock as well, our uh, hand sanitizer dispensers, uh, which went from, you know, selling a, a couple thousand uh, here and there to thousands and 10 thousands, uh, you know, uh, hand sanitizer dispensers are everywhere. So even if you don't have a, uh, a sink, warm water faucet, you know, uh, close by, 
the hand sanitizer dispensers are going to continue to proliferate everywhere. Uh, but still, it's important that, you know, even if you're using those products, that you get to the bathroom and wash your hands the, the best way possible when the opportunity arises. My doctor told me, wash your hands, don't touch your face, and maintain your surroundings, and you'll be okay. If you get sick, call me. That's right. That's, that's what he told me. And, that's uh, right. You know, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to you. Been my doctor for over 20 years. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, keep your surroundings, and you'll be okay. You know, I, uh, you know, like you said, I think uh, it, it's been a, a dramatic change, I think, for some companies because we've always been in commercial hand washing. A hundred years ago, when the company invented the wash fountain, uh, you know, those big uh, you know, terrazzo cement sinks that were in many schools, almost every, you know, many, many factories in North America. Uh, that was the first commercial hand washing fixture. And uh, we've just continued to upgrade that, uh, make them, you know, align with the marketplace. Uh, our designers here have a very outside in mindset. So we're always evolving our products with the needs of the marketplace. So um, commercial hand washing is just going through another evolution, and because you know that's what we do here, uh, we've really been you know on the leading edge of that going forward, and excited to play that role. You know, my my family's uh, been in construction since 1888. It's on its fourth generation. We're in recycling and construction demolition. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm from Philadelphia, so all the grandsons, when you got your license at 16. You had to go work in the scrapyard. You know that was just the way it was. If you were if you were a, a son or a boy, so that summer my three cousins were all born in June. So all three of us went in the scrapyard, and at the end of the day it was OSHA. You had to go in and take a shower because you had to get all you the know? stuff off you. You yeah. know. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm like, gee, I wonder if those. I wonder if co my cousin Scott, who's running the gig here these days, is uh you know upgraded those showers in there because you know Pennsylvania was probably the easiest state to do business in you know during the lockdown and all that you know and um just, when you said about the showers I'm thinking oh yeah I remember when I had to go do the shower gig you know in the summer there I wonder if they're you know upgraded there so anyway yeah you, you never know where those customers are you know so it oh. uh, um. If you wanted to leave one positive thought or phrase, what would it be to our listeners out there on commercial construction coffee talk? <coughs> Excuse me. I, I think uh, you know we've discussed. There's been obviously a lot of tragedy, you know, surrounding COVID. Uh, no one knows what the right answers are. No one knows how long it's going to last, and uh, everybody knows uh, somebody who's been you know devastated uh, by this, you know horrible situation that we're all in. But I think that it's also provided a great opportunity and a, a positive challenge for all of us in commercial construction uh, it, to make public spaces cleaner, healthier, more accessible. And you know, like you said, that probably should have happened a long time ago. But uh, from my you know, optimistic standpoint, that's giving everyone the onus to come up with those new creative ideas, to be inspired and motivated. Uh, we're not gonna do that in five or 10 years. We're going to do that today. We're going to make sure those things come out in 2022 and 2023. And uh, those of us that have been in this business uh, for decades, I think that that's a, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a mandate uh, to us. It's a, it's a mission that we need to accept. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about that, of what we can really do in those public spaces to take them to the next level. If someone wanted to get in touch with you or Bradley and talk about your, you know, innovations or how you might be able to help them with their, you know, hand san sanitizing solutions in their facilities, how would they, how would they reach out to you at Bradley? Uh, I, I believe I'm on the Bradley uh, website and on LinkedIn, but, uh, uh, my email is uh, John J O N dot Domacy D O M M I S S E at BradleyCorp.com. A lot of my mail doesn't come that way, but it is John J O N dot Domacy D O M M I S S E at BradleyCorp.com. And uh, 
I'd be glad to uh, talk with anyone about that and uh, uh, always looking to help, uh, you know, continue to uh, profess the message of, you know, wash your hands, wash your hands and uh, make safe uh, public spaces. If uh, anyone to get in touch with me, you can get me at David C at CCR-mag.com. Uh, we're always looking for stories, et cetera. Uh, you know, we just had 2.8 million people hit our website last month. So all you out there on the internet, thanks for you know consuming all our content. Uh, I know you've heard this before. You know, those of you who've seen these episodes, but it's like playing the lottery. If you don't buy a ticket, you can't win. If you don't send me something, I can't post it. I can't find it in the magazine, you know, and so forth. So uh, you know, send me something and we'll find a place for it. Uh, John, the last thing I want to tell you, not many companies have been around for 100 years. And, uh, uh, you know, you've got your, you actually have an ad coming up in my next issue because your publicist sent me the press release about your 100 year anniversary. And I said, hey, you know, you know, uh, you know, you should, uh, you guys should promote that and so forth because you're only 100 once, you know? And, uh, you know, it, uh, it's an amazing feat. So congratulations. Well, thank you very much. There's a lot of great people here. And, uh, we're looking forward to the next hundred years. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm I'm almost 25 years, you know. So I didn't even think I was going to make it to 10, or even you know, who knows when I went out on my own in 2001, whatever. So you know, I'm thinking, you know, you know, it's funny. I just had White Castle on my cover on the last issue, and mm -hmm. they were celebrating their hundred year anniversary. And I said to myself, God, did they even make hamburgers back a hundred years ago? So I had to go back. I had to go on their website, you know, and go look at it. And sure, I went. I went back in history, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, oh my God, they really—they've been around a hundred years. It's amazing, you know. Time flies. I mean, you know, it's someone incredible. actually. I told an architect that, and I said, yeah, we got it, White Castle a hundred years, and they're like, they were making hamburgers back then. So they went back and they emailed me, they're like, David, you're right. They've been around a hundred years. I didn't even know they made hamburgers a hundred years ago. You know. <laughs> Yeah, so. just looking at those great pictures from 100 years ago uh, and just the, you know, the family history, the employee stories, uh, it's incredible. It's, a, it's incredible to be a part of it. Well, listen, uh, congratulations. That, that's a feat that not many, many companies can say. And, uh, uh, you know, we wish you, you know, the best for the next 100 years. Uh, thanks again for, uh, you, know, you know, sitting in on our thing. And uh, good luck to the Brewers. Good luck to the Bucks. Uh, the Badgers, everybody else up there and up in Wisconsin. And, uh, you know, for all you out there in commercial construction, coffee talk land, thanks for chiming in. You got Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, you got Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, New Year's, and boom, we're going to close the books on 2021 and, you know, look forward to a more positive and healthy and more prosperous uh, 2022. So with that said, I am going to sign off uh, just below the Buford Dam in uh, Sugar Hill, Georgia. And John, say goodbye to our, uh, our audience out there, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk from Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thanks or, for having me. Uh, Menomee Falls, actually. Did I pronounce it right? Close enough. Yeah, I, always get, I know where it is. So Menomee Falls, oh. Wisconsin. I'll say it fast. So, That's right. We appreciate well, yeah. we appreciate the input and uh, thanks for finding the time and your busy schedule. And to all of you out there, commercial construction coffee talk land, we will see you on a next time on a future episode. Uh, everybody have a great rest of the week and uh, go Braves! Big parade Friday downtown ATL World Champions. See you, John. We'll talk to you next time. All right. Thank you. You bet. See you later. <laughs>